Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over 22 different screener settings for Finviz. I would encourage you guys to please subscribe to the channel and like the video, it does help out the channel way more than you guys could possibly imagine. Now, one last thing before we get started here, or two things, make sure you have a Finviz account so you guys can save this so you guys don't have to enter in all this information time after time. And if you guys have any questions over what an index is, PE, PB, market cap, any of those types of terms, you guys can just open up the help section right here and the first page is actually going to be what is a stock screener and it'll go over each of the definitions for each of the terms you guys will see on this all right so if you guys have any questions throughout the entire video about any of these terms feel free to pause look it up it'll help you out a little bit more now first of all we're going to get started with super breakouts you guys can name these whatever you want to i have my fun names with them because i've been trading for a while but there are more professional names if you guys want to use them all right now for the market cap on the super breakouts you want to have the mid over 2 billion mid over 2 billion i'm going to make this quick and easy for you guys as quick as i can without losing any information performance you want it to be week up 20 day simple moving average price above the sma you want the price to be over 50 dollars. 50 day simple moving average you want the price to be above the 50 moving average this just means the price has been going up for a while we haven't seen any death crosses things are looking pretty good so far now, we want to have average volume over 500,000, means there's good liquidity. Optionable and shortable, this is optional for you guys. I have it set to optionable and shortable because I like to short and do options. If you guys do not trade options or you do not short, just click any and you'll get more opportunities for plays here, okay? And lastly, we just want country USA, all right? After you do this, you are going to go over here to save screen, type in the name that you want to have here. I'm going to just type in test. You come down here and you're going to click save changes so that when you come back now you see test is right here in my little uh, section all right now i'm going to go back to edit screen i'm going to remove this one because i don't need it and i'm going to hit save changes once more and it is gone all right? in case you ever need to get rid of one next we have unusual volume poppers these ones are basically unusual volume they popped they may be fun for day trades or they may be fun for options, but more for day trading if you ask me. You can swing it, but be very, very careful. Usually if you swing it, you want to be swinging it back down after a monster move. If we look at here, you know, TEN, it's up 93% today. That could be a fun thing to either short or try to play once you figure out where it's going. So you might add it to your watch list. Now, market cap, 300 million to 2 billion. 300 million to 2 billion. Performance today up. Average volume over 100K. Optionable, shortable, both. And industry, stocks only, EX funds. Stocks only, EX funds. All right? And then right here on the top, you want to have signal, unusual volume. Signal, unusual volume. All right? And again, we're going to save. Uh, this is the last time I tell you guys to save. I assume you guys are going to know how to save from here on out. Next, we're going to have breakouts here. This is more of a broad swath uh, screener setting. You guys are going to be looking at hundreds of, different, hundreds of different stocks. If you guys are looking at one screener on a daily basis, it's either, it's either going to be this one or another breakout one that I have for you guys. This is where you guys are going to be looking for most of your plays. Now, you want the market cap to be above mid over 2 billion, plus mid over 2 billion, average volume over 500K. Country, United States of America, optionable. You can do any, but I prefer trading United States, uh, United States of America companies. Optionable, shortable, both. Price over 100. It's optional. You can actually have it be above 50 if you guys want to trade stocks that are cheaper than $100. I have more capital than the average individual, so I can feel more comfortable doing $100. If you guys want, $50 is not a bad place to start above $50 if you want to. All right. Next, we're going to move over here to short squeeze. Now, price over $10. Float short over 15%. Average volume over 100K, optionable, shortable, optionable and shortable. Institutional under ownership under 50%. We all know what short squeezes are. GameStop, AMC, this will help you find a next one. Don't expect them to be that massive. Usually you're expecting like 20 to 30% profits off of them. Take them and run. Don't try to get the next monster thing. Um, you know, it, it's very risky. Most people lose money before that actually happens. Now, one last thing here, institutional ownership under 50%. This just means that if you know if there's a squeeze you don't want the owners to sell everything they have and drop it on the all the, the retail investors that try to pump it up after the squeeze okay so you just want it to be lower next after short squeeze we have can slim a lot of you guys like this one eps growth past five years over 20 percent sales growth past five years over 20 percent eps growth this year over 20 percent 
EPS growth quarter over quarter is also going to be 20%. And then we have sales growth quarter over quarter is also going to be over 20%. All right. After that, we have low PE value. Make sure you guys are saving these. I really cannot stress that enough. Low PE value. Market cap small under 2 billion. Market cap small under 2 billion. PB is low under 1. Price is over $5. Over $5. PE is less than 15. Low. Return on assets, just want it to be positive. Return on equity is positive. And PEG is going to be low, less than one, low. Now moving on to undervalued dividend growth. Market cap, large, over 10 billion, large, over 10 billion. Dividend yield, positive, positive. PE, under 20. EPS growth next five years, over 5%. Payout ratio, under 50%. PEG low, less than one, EPS growth next year. This is basically, you're finding stocks that are undervalued. So what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be getting the dividends from the undervalued stocks, but once they become valued properly, you're gonna see the price increase. So you're gonna be making money with the dividends and through the value of the actual stock that you own, the security. Next, we have buy and hold value. Buy, hold, let it just keep going up. Now, you can see we're not in the best of markets right now. So there's really only five stocks it recommends. That's okay. When we hit back into a bull market, this will be flush with different plays you guys can look at. Now, market cap plus micro over 50 million. 20 days simple moving average above the SMA 20. Beta over 1.5. EPS growth next five years. You want it to be above 10%. Return on equity over 15%. And PEG over one. Lastly here, we have current ratio over 1.5. Okay. Make sure to save. Consistent growth on a bullish trend, right? You know, only see one here because, of course, the market's not looking too hot. We've been talking about this for a while. But, again, when the bull market hits off, you'll see much more opportunities to make money, and it'll just make your life a lot easier. Now, we have EPS growth past five years, positive. Price, over $15. EPS growth next five years, positive. Return on equity, over 15%. 52-week high-low, 90% or more above. EPS growth this year, over 25%. EPS growth quarter over quarter, only over 20%. RSI, not oversold, less than 50. EPS growth next year, over 15%. And institutional ownership, over 10%. Right. High relative volume. This just means uh, a normal security will have a decent amount of volume, but it stays within this range. When it starts to pop off outside of that range, something is happening. A hedge fund could be buying into it. Institutional money could be buying into it. We don't really know. You guys will do some extra research on, on that yourself, or there's some news coming out. But it gives you a good opportunity to say, hey, something over there is going on. Maybe I should be looking at uh, you know, investing in this security, so to speak. All right. Quick ratio, over $1. 20-day simple moving average, above the 20 Price above the five. For the 50 day simple moving average, you want to have it set to 50 above the SMA 200. So that means recently there was some type of golden cross, but overall it's still a nice bullish trend. 200 daily simple moving average, you want the SMA 200 to be below the 50. Basically, these are the same thing. I just like to be, you know, straightforward about it. Average volume over 500,000, excuse me, over 400,000. EPS growth quarter over quarter over 15%. Relative volume over 1.5. This means 1.5 times the average volume. If the average volume was 100,000, it would only trigger and show up on here if there was 150,000 vo uh, volume going on there that day, or so far that day, excuse me. Sales growth quarter over quarter over 15%, and the current ratio is going to be over one, over one. Next, we have high sales growth. Price over $5, float short under 5%. Sales growth past five years over 20%. Return on equity over 15% and debt at to equity is under 0.5. Average volume over 200,000. Sales growth quarter over quarter is going to be over 20%. And institutional ownership is going to be over 60%. Over 60%. Next, we have higher earnings growth. 200 daily simple moving average. We want the price to be above the SMA 200. The average volume, we want it to be over 400,000. EPS growth this year over 25%, EPS growth quarter over quarter over 25%, and the RSI not oversold less than 50. Right? EPS growth next year 
over 25%, sales growth quarter over quarter over 25%. Nice and easy. SMA crossover. This one's pretty fun. You can actually change these up any way you want to, depending on where you want these crossovers to actually happen. But for now, we're just going to use this one. Beta is over one. PE is profitable above zero. Float short is low, under 5%. Uh, 50 day simple moving average is 50. The SMA 50 cross the SMA 20 below. All right. This just means that the 20 week move, the 20 day moving average is crossing above the 50 day moving average. You can set that here. You can have a lot of fun with these ones. These are stuff that you're going to be messing around with, but you want to have all these other ones set uh, set so you can adjust the 20, the 50, and the 200 to whatever specifications you guys want to. So this one's more uh, flexible, if you will. Now, average volume over 400,000 shares and relative volume over one. Make sure to save. Breaking out. You want to have the price above the SMA 20, price above the SMA 50. Good stuff happening there. You want to have a new high, 50-day high low, new high. You're not going to find many stocks like this on average, but right now you do see some really good ones. And if you were to go to charts, all reaching all-time highs or they have reached all-time highs recently in the case of H HMHC, right? So this could be a very good place. Right. Now, return on equity over 20%. Debt to equity is going to be under one. The 200 daily simple moving average is going to be the price above the SMA 200. It just means the price is above the 200 moving average. Nice simple. Average volume over 100,000 shares, over 100,000. Now we have new highs. This one's very, very simple. Performance today up, 20 day high low, new high. Price under $7. These are really fun if you guys find something that's very cheap on the market you guys just want to hold on to it. That means good news has come out. You buy it and you just let it sit for a while. This can take years, but these things can like be very, very good. Tesla at one point showed up on this. Uh, Microsoft at one point showed up on this. It's those type of plays, okay? Oh, excuse me, not Microsoft. Um, another another play, what was Microsoft? Something similar to Tesla. I forget what it was called. 50-day um, high low, new high. Analysts recommend buy. 52-week high-low, new high, and change up. All right, nice and easy. Then we have oversold with upcoming earnings. These can be great for YOLO plays as far as options. Normally, I don't recommend you guys trading uh, earnings because they're very volatile. If you guys don't know what you're doing and you guys aren't looking at the 10K reports, some of those financial reports, a lot of the, the nitty-gritty fundamental stuff. But for oversold with upcoming earnings, this gives it a great chance to have a massive pop. And if you guys actually own options on these, you guys can be making a bunch of money really, really quickly here, okay? Or you guys could just buy stocks and uh, watch it pop off for um, less returns, but also less risk involved. So there's going to be an optionable step in here that I'll show you guys uh, now. Market cap plus small over 300 million. Performance year plus 10. You just want to be 10% for the year so far. Average volume over 750K. A lot of volume there. EPS growth over 15%. Gross margin over 20%. RSI not overbought. Earnings date this month. Current volume over 1 million. All right. Now, the one thing that's optionable here is when you go over to, you know, is optionable and shortable. If you guys want to trade options, you will switch that to, yes, optionable and shortable. Otherwise, you're just going to have it set to any. All right. That's the only thing you really have to worry about as far as this is concerned. And, you know, maybe you'll just go set it's optionable and not shortable. You see there's still 40 stocks you can look at right here. If you take this off, it goes from 40 to 40. So actually not really much changed here. Everything is optionable and shortable, which makes it easy. Now, after that, we have oversold reversal. These are pretty fun. You find something that's oversold. You're just waiting for a breakout of some type on the, on the technicals, and then you buy, and you wait for it to just kind of slowly move back up. They're really good in bear market. So as this bear market continues, you will see this actually uh, grow more and more and more. Uh, those are going to be good buying opportunities. You're going to be holding these for like a couple months, though, but they will give you solid returns. Price, over $5. RSI, oversold. Change, up. Relative volume over two. After that, and again, make sure to save. Bounce at the moving average. These are really fun. A lot of times moving averages are levels of support and resistance. If it's bouncing or hitting it, that may signal an opportunity to open a position there. 20-day simple moving average. Price is above that. 
50 day simple moving average price is below that. So you can imagine two moving averages, the price in between it, and it's, they're getting squeezed by the moving averages because one's coming down because the price is below it, one's going up because the price is uh, above it. Right? So you wanna watch that squeeze and pop. Now, average volume over 400,000, relative volume over one, and current volume over 2 million. Next, we have potential uptrend from weekly lows. So these aren't going to be the best stocks, but whenever they do change around, you're going to look a little bit happier with them, be a little bit happier with them. Weak performance, uh, week, excuse me, performance week down, average volume over 400,000, pattern channel up. These are very, very simple. You have 120 different stocks to choose from. Channel up, channel up, channel up. You see these breakdowns occurring. They're good opportunities to open up shorts, but you will usually see some good plays. Right now, FGIN, it's either going to break down hard or break out for a nice move to this upward channel right there. All right. Next, we're going to have bankruptcy squeeze candidates. The only one of these that's actually made me any real good money was Hertz last year. Hertz returned beautifully for me, but it was on this scanner. It was amazing. All right. First of all, you have PB low, less than one, float short over 30%, and that's it. These are horrible companies to buy and hold unless you do a little bit of research on them. Right now, these are what you got. Not many at all. Some have been hitting, getting hit low. You know, they've all been having rough times. Got to be very careful. But, you know, if for whatever reason they get saved by getting bought out or something like that, they have amazing pops. And that's what you're going to be hoping for. But you have to be looking at the news. You kind of have to be uh, taking a little bit of a yellow plan here. Very risky, but very good rewards if they do pan out. Again, only one has ever worked for me, but I think it's still important that you guys have this very minimal scanner setting. Now, lastly, we oh, two more actually. Weekly earnings gap up. We have float short under 25%. Average true range over 0.5. Average volume over 400,000. Earnings date tomorrow after market. All right. Gap up 2%. And current volume, I know you can't see this in my head. Current volume is going to be over 50k. Let me move my head over here just to be nice. A little bit more. Current volume over 50k. All right. And then here we go. Shorted stocks. We want to have it set to market cap small over 300 million. Average volume over 500,000. Float short high over 20. Relative volume over one. Current volume over 500,000. Price over $3. This is for the, the smaller cap ones here. We talked about the ones over $10. This is the one for the very small ones. These are much, much more risky, but I understand that you guys like to take some risk. So I'm, I'm putting this one on there for you guys as well. Just understand it is risky. Optionable and shortable, both. And then country, United States of America. Now, that is everything you guys need to know. Please, please, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. And if you guys really want to support the channel, uh, I would really recommend you guys leave a comment of like five or more words. It really does help out more than you guys know. I'm trying to beat this algorithm as best I can. Thank you guys very much and have a fantastic rest of your day. Talk to me nice. Talk to me honestly.